Man, what an excellent day on the water. As promised, I have this striper. We're gonna cut into him. We're here with Captain Matt Dempsey, as well as my good buddy, Christopher Doyle. And uh, we're just gonna give you guys a rundown of what happened yesterday, a little bit into this fishery and some of the captains into this fishery. First off, dude, thank you for taking us out. Oh, it's no problem, guys. I'm incredible. glad you guys were able to come up here. It was awesome. One of the most amazing fishing experiences that I have had, and I mean, we've been able to fish all Some over cool Chris. places and the bait the whales the birds flying everywhere stripers big blue fins marking just like you see on the tv pretty incredible yeah, videos and pictures as incredible as they might look and i hope we deliver that in this video cannot do justice to experiencing it firsthand and it's something that you're very very used to yeah you know but i'm sure you get that every time you bring new clients out on your charter operation Oh yeah, we we're very <laughs> blessed out here to be able to fish so close to the shore and really get like National Geographic like feeds with whales, birds, multiple species as you guys see, striped bass, bluefin, bluefish. We're really very fortunate and everything is relatively close to shore too, which is shocking. Yeah, right. Uh, especially with the populations of people that we have down here, you would think we'd have to go 50 miles offshore and it's really like three to five miles offshore, yep. which is very fortunate. Yeah, so it's within striking distance too to your average recreational angler as well. About a year ago, last season at some point, we stocked the Goose Hummock Shop up here in Orleans, Cape Cod. Matt got a hold of some of our jigs and we got a video that he sent to us of a giant bluefin that he got on a, a torpedo jig. Maybe it was a guava color pattern. Yep. We reached out to Matt and had a chat with him about what, what an incredible fish to be caught in one of our torpedo jigs that you know we originally made and used for bottom species. And they, I mean, let's be honest, they do catch everything in the ocean. We it's adopted them <laughs> into tuna. <laughs> and just about everything else. Everything, you name it, they're, they're doing it. But we had subsequent conversations with, with Matt and what really, really intrigued me was you were interested in catching fish on the jig. Oh yeah, the jigs work great. We've caught a lot of tuna on them. And I mean, as you see too, stripers love them. Those jigs, you just really can't go wrong with it. That's what brought us up here to come fish with you. So tell us a little bit about how you target these tuna. You do drop some baits, some live baits, yeah. some cut baits, but you're also working a jig at the same time. Tell us about that. We're on charters. We're trying to put meat on the deck for people or catch that fish of a lifetime. Got baits out there. And I've also got them working the jigs all the way up and down through the water column. When I see a fish on the sounder, I'm telling them, hey, it's 40 feet below the boat, 80 feet down, and trying to get those jigs in the right spot to get the opportunity to get that bite for the day. So you're putting out a spread. Yeah, Like what's, exactly. what's a typical spread look like out on the conch 27? <laughs> Depends how many people we got on the boat. Typically, you know, we've got two bait rods out, and then if it's three or four guys, they're jigging, we've got blind casting too. Really just want to give yourself the best opportunity to catch a fish. Mm -hmm. And you never know what it's going to be that day, whether it's the bait, the jigs, top water. You never know what it's really going to be that day until you get out there. And then I noticed like yesterday, like you're, you're chatting with people, like you guys are communicating that you've got buddies out there. Like yes. who's, who's some of the captains in this area that, that you're talking to and that you're going back and forth to figure out what's going on out there. Like any names that stand out to you? Yep, um, we've got some great captains down here. And I mean, we all put people on the fish. That's what we're really concerned about. You've got Alex and Rob Lowell with Cape Cod Offshore, Josh Zacharias, Eric Newhouse, Cooney, Doug Edmonds, Mike Zamito, just some great captains. And that's just a few of us out here, really. And you've got some of the OGs I've watched them growing up. You've got Bobby Rice with Real Deal Charters, Colin with Cape Star. Did Some, we see Bobby Rice out there? We did we see said, Bobby right, Rice. Right. Yeah. You know, we all have our days. We get a little spicy at the docks because someone's on there a little bit too long waiting for a client. But without guys all working together, it really wouldn't come together like it does. Yeah, teamwork. 100%. If anyone's interested in, in fishing the Cape Cod waters, obviously we're going to have information below on Salt Reaper Charters, Captain Matt Dempsey. I would imagine you can get in touch with him and he can also point you in the direction of any oh, yeah. of the other captains that you just mentioned. Back to fishing yesterday too though, you know, this was an anticipated trip. We've talked about- uh, Only anticipated. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And we were excited to fish with you because you're excited about the jig. You seem to have a lot of experience with working the jigs. We're also coming out here with this idea that we want to do it on rods that are designated for slow pitching, even though we're not being purist slow pitch 
jigging anglers, especially when we're okay. talking about a giant a tuna, we're, we're kind of developing this, this, I don't know what you want to call it, a, a hybridized process of using more powerful gear that is overrated for the size jig, but it's gear that's adequate, hopefully, for the fish. To battle some of these. Right, mega giant. but compared to traditional tackle, it still looks like it's way under gut, right? right? So, did we bring any bait on the boat? Did we, we bring did the not bait do any bait. All we were doing was jigs. We left that stuff at the dock. We, we had him leave it at the home, and we worked jigs all day long. That's kind of our thing, though. And that's our thing. If we don't catch a single fish, as long as we get to drop our jigs. Right. We're okay. So what you guys just witnessed was us doing a lot of jigging. There was a lot of striped bass caught. There was a lot of whiting caught. I snagged a sand deal. Boston mackerels were caught. Sharks, couple Lord. sand sharks out okay. there. <laughs> a couple times 10. <laughs> we didn't get the tuna bite until pretty late in the afternoon. But we were marking them. We were marking them. And it's just about getting that jig down, getting it in front of their face. Yeah. They are a fish. They're big, they're gonna eat. You just gotta get that opportunity where the jig's at the right place, right time, and that fish will eat. Get in front of their face. Yep. yep. So that check mark on the screen. You that, that, that red check mark, you gotta get that jig in front of their face and they're gonna eat so it. So we all watch Wicked Tuna. We're in math, right? I gotta bring it up, right? They <laughs> yep. show the check mark. That's, and you're gonna go off, right? It's legit, it's legit. Every time you see the check mark on Wicked Tuna, then you catch a fish every time. We saw that check mark, what, seven, eight times before, before we got our hands. Yeah. What was cool was, you know, there was might have been an hour or two in between check marks and marking a fish but as soon as you call check it's like let's get to that you know yeah, the excitement just builds <laughs> right back power. up and you're like anticipating yeah. that hit every time yeah. you know our strike it was actually got by captain matt we were all there we were all probably near the bottom he called 40 feet under the surface because you were seeing it you probably had a little jump a little jump but we were all bringing them up and and it was actually the saragossa 20k yep. spinning setup which you hooked the fish i was next to you you were basically throwing it in my face. So I took my setup and put it in John's hands. He had a, I don't know what he did after that, but next thing you know, I got a big bluefin tuna attached to the Saragossa 20K and it was on after that. Yeah, it was a team effort, yeah. really yeah. all around. You it know, was a team effort. Somebody's gotta be on the helm, kind of keeping you either tight or, or chasing or Trying to catch fit. up to the fish. I mean, yeah. you gotta, there's a lot of moving parts on this. Yeah. Bringing water to the front, making sure the guy's staying yeah, that's hydrated. Right. That's right. That's right. I got a little sip. I'm After going. jigging all day, which is, you know, you're burning some energy all day, jigging these lead lures up and down. So you're kind of feeling it towards three, four o'clock during the day. And then you hook this giant fish and you're like, uh oh. Now I got my. Do I out. have the juice to do this? So I think the first initial adrenaline rush, you've got that energy. Oh, yeah. And you're Control. going. But 30 minutes later, you're yeah. like, holy smokes. I, I wanted to give John an opportunity to try his hand on the run. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Christopher Doyle did not give me an opportunity. He gave himself an opportunity <laughs> to sit down <laughs> and, and relax his, yeah. his muscles. Yeah. It's definitely a team effort, though. Yeah. On every trip, you know, when you hook into that upper size class fish, you need multiple guys on the rod because if that fish gets a break, He's gonna get all that oxygen back in and just dive down and just fight that much harder. You gotta break their will, otherwise yeah. they will not stop. It took two gentlemen to break that fish as well yesterday. It did. <laughs> if I break their will, you get their head turned. You want their head to get up, moving them towards the surface. You don't want them to be comfortable. You don't want them just swimming because that's all that fish does its whole life is swim. And you want to just keep slowing that down and break those fish down that way. The harpoon. So you gotta, you gotta figure some of these guys, they've never had this opportunity to get into fish that you need to stick a harpoon in, right? We do it back home on the swordfish, but it's not everybody that needs to have one of these on their boat. So whenever you pull out the harpoon, what's your game plan with that as far as sticking it into a large tuna? Are you aiming for a certain spot? Are you trying to get it to a certain depth? How does that work? It's a little bit of show for the charters. You know, everyone sees Wicked Tuna, sees them harpooning, but it's also that fish of a lifetime you don't want a customer to lose them at the boat because I couldn't reach to hit him with a gaff. It just gives you that little bit of insurance on the fish, a second line in him, blows him down a little bit, hopefully. And it's just that extra reassurance that we're gonna get that fish to the boat. If we're planning on releasing the fish, we're not harpooning them in any way. You obviously wanna try to hit him in the upper half, 
where there's vital organs and that's kind of slowing them down. But in all else fails, you just want to put a hole in them. Obviously, stick the fish wherever you can in the heat of the moment. Yep. But if you can hit the vital organ, then it injures him. And it slows him down that much better. Vital organ hit, it, it just helps bring that fish to the boat that much quicker and more humanely. Who doesn't love a harpoon, right? Like, <laughs> he pulled out the harpoon and I'm like, Pat, I've never thrown a harpoon before, but I would like to try it today, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep. So, and you're like, you're like, all right, Johnny, you know, just you grab where the tape is here, you put your palm on the butt of the harpoon, yep. and you, you lift that up, guys, and it's got some weight to it, and you get your hand up forward on it, on the back of it, and what do you do? You're just thrusting it down into them. And then drop and, the and whole thing. As hard as you can. You want to try to put it through them. The better penetration you get, the more likely that dart's going to stay in them, and lead to you getting that fish on the boat. I didn't get my opportunity to throw the harpoon this time around so i'm thinking we need to do Next this time? again yeah we gotta do it <laughs> yeah. again we can't finish this up without talking about great white sharks especially here on cape in cod. cape cod yeah <laughs> there are a lot of them there are many you know you go to that that app Shark and if you look at apps, yeah, yeah if you look at the week you look at the month if you look at the full year it's just the whole thing is just littered with dots we run into them quite often here on the cape there's also some great charters monomoy sport fishing darren he specializes in just going up and down the beaches looking for great white hmm. and giving people the opportunity to see them just doing what they naturally do, which is super cool. We unfortunately do run into them while we're fishing. They're doing what they do, eating fish, whether it's on our line or just swimming around out there. Yesterday was a little bit of excitement with our catch. A little bit. A little bit. I'm still at a loss for words. I, I feel like a full-size pickup truck with teeth came up and tried to steal our fish. <laughs> It did. Uh, that was one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. It was big. That was incredible. I've been replaying it in my head, and I, I, I spoke to, to like my mother, you know, this morning, and you know, I told her the truth. Sometimes I don't always tell her the truth, but I'm sitting on the starboard side of the boat on the gunnel right here, and the tweet that had the tail rope was right here to my left, meaning we had just tail roped the fish, and I'm sitting down now, and we're just kind of like celebrating the uh, success of, of landing this this tuna. I had eye contact with Matt and we were chatting. What we were chatting about, we were chatting about the fish. I don't remember the specifics because the next words out of his mouth as he was looking at me, they shifted just to the left of me and it was great white, look out. And I look over my left shoulder and it was just the body mass and the girth of a head that was bigger than I've ever seen in the water, like whale shark status. It was scary, bro. Feet from Very me. scary. Nightmares. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, Nightmares. So, now, so now I've been replaying it in my head and it's like he's come out of the water and like grabbed me <laughs> and pulled me in. I'm like, that, like yeah, he was after the two. I mean, he didn't take a chunk out of the fish. He got the, the right side, you know. He put his jaws around it. I mean, you can see where the upper teeth hit and the lower jaw hit. And I mean, that circumference is. It happened yeah. so quick. And we were in this mode of preserving the fish that to get it on film, it just wasn't possible. It would have been epic. If we, let him, epic. <laughs> if we let him take a little more chunk of the yeah. fish, but we didn't want him to have our fish. That was our fish. We fought that fish. You did yeah. nothing to get and that fish. And then we fish. fought it out of his jaws. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. do you think you Literally, <laughs> he bought it out of his chest. Yeah, it oh happened quick. Goodness. Dude, that took some uh, courage. You put your yeah. hands around the, the tail yeah. rope. And, and you were. Yeah, you just got to try to pull it away from him as you were quick, quick as you to can. It. Yeah. And then we put boat in gear, yep. started moving, and then he was gone. Yeah, I'm sure he wasn't too far away, though. As fast as he came in, they can reappear just like that yeah so, you know you just got to be aware where your hands are in the water you know always look over the side before you wash your hands off <laughs> yeah. yeah cap i cannot thank you enough for taking us out here and taking us on one of the best adventures that i would say we've been on it was just incredible thank you to all the captains in this area that have paved the way for us to come here and enjoy this place and uh guys Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You can follow Captain Matt Dempsey at Salt Reaper Charters. Yep. And most importantly, jig, jig on. on.